Welcome to the CoLab Podcast. My name is Michelle. And my name is Devin. On this podcast, we explore concepts of self-mastery and community collaboration through in-depth panel discussions and intimate interviews with dance's most prominent figures. Yeah, yeah. See my peanut butter jelly snack, pull it right, blushy, uh, painting. That's my sunshine when it's raining. That's my pool, yeah, yeah. When I'm all alone, she pulled through. Welcome back to the CoLab Podcast. My name is Michelle, and I'm here with my sister and co-host, Devin. And joining us on today's episode is our brother, Dylan. I know that he looks familiar to you because we've had him on the podcast before, and we have some exciting news to share with you all today. And that is that Dylan is going to be joining us on the CoLab Podcast as one of our co-hosts. Yeah. What up, Colab Podcast? Can you sound a little bit more enthusiastic? <laughs> what up, Colab Podcast? Let's take it to a new level. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yay. Welcome, Dylan. Hey. Yeah, I'm so excited. I think, you know, in an ideal setting, obviously, we'd like to have Jordan be a part of it too. Jordy, we love you and we miss you. Devin shaking her head no. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, this I'm kind of giving. <laughs> Um, (laughs) this kind of goes back to our days when we were, you know, running a studio, it was, you know, Devin and I, and then Jordan and Dylan were there as well. And it was the four of us. I was going to say the four musketeers, but that's a wrong reference because there's only three musketeers. (laughs) We can be the four musketeers. (laughs) Um, but it was the four of us and, you know, I feel like it was a natural progression to bring Dylan on as a co-host, um, to accompany us on our, our collab podcast journey. So Dylan, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for agreeing to hang with us all the time. Thank you for the offer. I'm very excited for this opportunity. I'm not really like a public speaker. But I like talking, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, yeah. Well, and part of the reason why we wanted Dylan um, to join us is because, you know, Devin and I, as much as we try to immerse ourselves in the community, there's a lot of other stuff that that we have going on personally. I have a full-time job. So the podcast is a side project for me. Devin has a full-time job. The podcast is a side project for her. And so as much as we want to immerse ourselves in in the dance community, sometimes it's really hard, especially now we're living in a time of COVID and the pandemic, a lot of studios have been closed, but Dylan is actually actively like involved in the dance community. He's still with 220. He's still attending rehearsals. And so it just made sense to have him come join us as we're talking to these community leaders and these prominent dance figures to just help us feel like we're a little bit more connected. So there's a purpose. It's not just because, you know, Dylan's cute, um, you know, which is part of it, but uh, (laughs) you can't be saying that. Why? You're my brother. You're my baby brother. Of course I can say you're cute. <laughs> cute AF, man. You're my little brother. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's it's multi-purpose. You're cute and you're relevant. Good job. Okay. Okay. I feel a little <laughs> bit weird, but okay. You can edit that out. Why? Why <laughs> do you feel weird? Because they called you cute? I've never saw myself as cute. Oh, Dilly. You know, I used to wipe your butt when you were a baby. I I used to wipe your wipe your cute little butt. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't let me finish. I didn't I don't see myself as cute. I see myself as handsome. There you go. Okay. No, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I swear I'm playing. <laughs> That's some next level. That's some next level confidence. I love it. Uh, you know. 2021 you know you got to bring all the confidence you can you know what i'm saying (laughs) i don't know what i'm saying to be honest with you (laughs) um i love it i i think we're already setting a good low bar for this the upcoming episodes (laughs) whoa okay okay (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to um, keep it fresh, keep it exciting and new with my jokes. Um, <laughs> we can edit all of this out, by the way. <laughs> no, I don't have time. <laughs> The whole point was to cut down on the editing time. Well, we don't got good. time for that. Just keep it, keep it real, keep it raw, unedited, uncut, uncut. Yeah, uncut. Yeah, collab let, podcast, uncut. I like it. Bonus, bonus they, features. Let let them feel like they're watching a reality show. I mean, we've talked about that. We would make we, our family would be. I think interesting. Well, okay. Obviously we think we would be interesting, but I think that other people would find us interesting because we have a very interesting dynamic as a family. I get that a lot. Like I get, I get people that say like, wow, that's weird that you talk to your brother and sister every day. Really? People Mm -hmm. say that. Yeah. That's just sad. I think. I know. Right. I mean, or like, like it's <laughs> it's weird that we see each other every week. Like I get that a lot too. Really? That's mm-hmm. so sad. I feel bad for the people that don't get to see their siblings every week. I know, right? I mean, you know, when I was smaller, people used to think you were my mom. <laughs> I know, that's freaking weird. <laughs> that's that's why all your friends still call me NT, which is so annoying. All your your young two twenty friends they call me auntie and I'm like what the heck? Not your freaking auntie. <laughs> Not your freaking auntie. <laughs> um, yeah. what? Go. Uh, I was just saying. I was just going off what we were talking about before. That's weird that people think that way. I know. I know we have we have a very close dynamic, so I think we would make a really good reality show. Plus, I think our parents are kind of weird and funny, and they say like weird stuff. So I, I feel like, I mean, obviously I would watch it because I think we're hilarious, but I think other people would watch it too. We would, we would, we would be better than the Kardashians. Oh, challenge, uh, challenge, Kardashians. Keeping up, keeping up with the Kardashians, we could be, what, beating it up with the Benares? I don't know. <laughs> no, that's, that's a bad That's really title. bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad. Stick to the podcast, Dylan. Making titles is not a good job for you. Um, making show titles. It's okay. It's okay. I'm working on it. <laughs> Well, part of the reason why we're here today is to to introduce Dylan, but also there's going to be some transitions on the podcast and we wanted to um, talk to you about it, you know, my policy and Devin's policy. um, And even when we were running the studio, we always had a very transparent policy. We felt that open communication and sharing how we feel and sharing you know, what's going on in our personal lives was really important to making connections. Um, And so even though we haven't been able to, you know, physically see our listeners, you know, we're connecting with you over Instagram, we know you're listening, you're showing your support, and we so much appreciate it. And as part of that, we want to make sure that we're transparent and that we are open with you. So we wanted to share some things that are happening, some changes that are happening in the podcast, part of the reason why Dylan is here is because Devin is actually going to take a little bit of time for herself. So Devin, do you want to tell us what is going on with you? What the heck is happening with you? Bye. <laughs> no, I'm That's it. Kidding. The uh, end of the episode. <laughs> no. Um, well, a lot, a lot's been happening. So I think I first want to circle back to what Michelle was saying and that we're so grateful to all of our listeners. You guys obviously are a huge part of us wanting to even do the podcast. The fact that we're able to share some amazing minds in the dance community and connect with other amazing minds. It's more than we could have ever asked for. 
I feel as though I have been slacking on engaging and connecting with everybody on Instagram. I'm the one who normally does the post over there. And I think our last post on there at the time that we're filming this was when we ended our last season. So that just makes me feel as though I've been neglecting our little social media platform, especially during this break, because at the time that we are recording this, we're in between seasons. It just doesn't make me feel good. I feel bad. I feel bad for neglecting it and feeling as though it just keeps getting dropped off my to-do list. So how many times have I said so? (laughs) I guess now that we're talking about it, I'm not really sure. Not really sure how I want to say this or exactly what I want to say other than I'm grateful to both Michelle and Dylan for being such an amazing support system, not just for this instance, but throughout my entire life. And they're allowing me to take a step back from the podcast so that I can focus on what is taking up a lot of my time right now. Um, And I think just in the past, I've gone through cycles of burnout I feel as though a lot of people listening will be able to relate to this, especially if you're a dancer. So many opportunities can come so quickly and you kind of feel obligated to say yes to all of them, but you quickly learn that your mind and your body can only take so much in one day. And I think this also kind of ties into COVID and what we've heard from some of our guests in these past seasons is that they were burnt out. They were running on empty, but it was really the stay at home orders that forced them to reflect and, and take time for themselves and to refuel, recharge. Now we're seeing a lot of dancers get back into the studio, back into rehearsal, which is amazing. But let us not forget that really exhaust that really exhausting and not so great feeling of dragging yourself to the studio, dragging yourself to rehearsal. I think for me in this year, or at least at this point, my goal is to just simplify. And and this is such a difficult thing because again, throughout my entire life, especially during my dance journey, I thought the more that I took on, the happier and the more fulfilled and the more successful I would be. But I'm realizing that that's not the case. If I can't give my all to something, it just makes me feel really crappy. And that's kind of what's happening with the podcast right now is I'm not able to give 100% and sort of uh, tagging in Dylan so that he can, you know, help facilitate a lot of the conversations that will be had in the future with, again, some really amazing minds in the dance community, because I still feel like that's important. It's incredibly important to me. I just cannot dedicate the time that is necessary to be a part of it right now. And that's really difficult for me to say, you know, especially because dance has been such a huge part of my life. It's given me so much. These two amazing people, my co-hosts have given me so much. So to say that I'm taking a step back, it does not make me feel good right now, but I know that this is what's going to be for the best at this time. I feel like I just went off on a tangent. So there it is. Thanks for sharing. I mean, you know, we... Uh, we talked about this offline. So, you know, we, you know, didn't record um, when Devin came to tell us that she wanted to take a step back from the podcast. Um, And and I think you made a really great point, Devin, A, a lot of the lessons that we've learned from the guests that we've talked to on the podcast, I think has really helped you come to this decision. Um, And so I think that, you know, it shouldn't be left unsaid that 
everyone that we've talked to in the last three seasons has really been an inspiration and a motivation in more ways than you know, um, because it's really helped us, I think, hone in on what our priorities are. Um, It's made us reflect on um, where our priorities should be. And I think that you realizing that you need to take a step back is a result of all of that motive, motivation and inspiration that our previous guests have shared. So thank you to, to everyone, you know, that has joined us on this journey. And it's not to say that Devin's going to be uh, leaving entirely. Um, she's going to be with us either working in the background or kind of working on the sidelines alongside us, you know, she'll still be part of it. um, But you'll be mainly seeing Dylan and I, which I think will be a fun dynamic um, considering that I'm his mom. So you get to boss him around. (laughs) Right. That's what you said. Everyone thought I was your mom. So I'm going to act like your mom, tell you to clean your room. Actually, your room is pretty clean. Good job. Uh, see, I clean my room. <laughs> I clean it. I clean it for the podcast. But other times I don't. I'm just kidding. Good yeah, job. good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Presentation. Presentation. It looks good. It looks good. Mm-hmm. Well, the- I wanted to just quickly go back to what Michelle was saying. Yeah, for me, this is not you know, completely ending my involvement with the podcast. I think my hope is that by stepping back from co-hosting will allow me to post more content on Instagram, which is something that, again, has kind of fallen by the wayside. So I kind of just need to transition my time and energy to something else so that all the bases are covered for the collab podcast. Yeah. And thank I mean, thank you for everything that you've done. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people know this, but you know, Devin is the creative mind behind all the aesthetics that you see for the podcast. Um, you know, we talked to Jane in our last season, our sister-in-law, and she helped us um, really bring Devin's visions to life. Um, and, and even when Devin and I were formulating the idea of the podcast, you know, Devin was really the brains behind it. So, you know, it's, um, it's certainly just as much as your podcast, even though we won't see you as much. You'll be the little boopy in collab podcast. Boop. <laughs> From the good place. Yes. Oh, I was like, what's a little boopy? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I swear there's just water in my mug. I swear that I'm not drinking. It's just water, hot water. Like the old little lady I am. You're not that old. Come collab, on. hot water. <laughs> um, well, thanks for sharing, Dev. And um it's a it's a day of celebration because now we've got this this uh fun dynamic with Dylan. Uh, I'll do do some dancing for us. Uh, I don't know about that. (laughs) I'll do my best to make it fun. I think the, one of the main things was when, you know, Oh, it's going to be so weird saying your guys' first names. It was, it was really, it was weird. Oh, well, I don't know what I'm saying. I lost my train of thought because I don't want to, I don't want to not say Ate. <laughs> it, okay. Devin does it. She calls me Michelle on the podcast. That's my alter ego on the podcast is Michelle. I should call and you then, your real first name. No, I'm Devin. kidding. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, I don't know. When, when, when they first <laughs> asked me to help with the podcast, Devin and Michelle. Oh, that's weird. I feel like I'm going to get like smacked. Where's mom? When Did you I see first... a hand <laughs> reach out? <laughs> yeah. When they, when they first asked me to help with a podcast, the first thing that came into my head was I don't want to overstep my boundaries. 
I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Like, even though you guys are my sisters, like, I don't, this is your guys' podcast, and I don't want to feel like, oh, who's this new guy? Like, what's he doing here? You know what I mean? So, uh, going off what Octodevon was saying, I, the reason I'm here is because I want to do as much as I can to lift the weight off her shoulders. I want to help in any way I can, you know, helping co-host, help you do some behind the scenes stuff. I want to try to help with all the creative stuff. And it's just, it's going to be a good outlet for me outside of dance as well, because I'm slowly getting back into it. I always say I'm slowly getting back into it, but I really am slowly getting back into it. So it's, it's going to be a really good experience. I'm excited. I'm excited for this. Your voice got really high. It's going to be a really good experience. Uh, I'm nervous. Uh. Well, thank you, Dill. Uh, I mean, I, I have already told you and Ate just how grateful I am for both of you. Sorry, Max. <laughs> That's my dog, Max, barking. For those of you who are listening to the podcast instead of viewing. If you're viewing, then you caught a little glimpse of him. But anyways, thank you, Dylan, for stepping in. And I hope, I mean, I know that you said that this will be a creative outlet for you, something outside of dance. And I hope that you're not just doing this because we asked you to, because, you know, that that would not make me feel good. I, I, I don't want, I don't want it to feel as though, you know, I'm, leaving you guys like behind with all this, this stuff to do, you know? Yeah. I mean, we've been known to pressure Dylan into some things. So yeah, as older sisters, we've been known to like boss him around one too many times, but hopefully this is not the case Dill. I think we're going to have a lot of fun on this podcast. I am so excited to work with you and just have a fresh new, a fresh new outlook, a fresh new face. Get it, get it boy. What? (laughs) that's her alter ego the alter ego it's michelle Michelle. it's michelle talking um all right well thank you dylan thank you devin i think uh this is going to be i think in the in the episodes to come it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be a whole new dynamic oh yeah oh yeah yeah like I said in the beginning, we're going to take it to a whole new level. Whole new level. Let's let's be realistic with our expectations, though. Let's not, like, get everyone excited, and then they're going to be like, that was half a level. That was not a whole nother level. That was three quarters of a level. You know? Let's, let's, let's be realistic. Let's set the bar low. <laughs> Can't set the bar low. This is our anniversary <laughs> season. I don't want to do it. <laughs> just kidding it is our anniversary season and we are so excited i can't believe we've been doing this for a year um and we've talked to so many great dancers in the community and you know we still have yet to bring a lot of those people back because i felt like a lot of those conversations weren't finished we had so much that we were trying to pack in an episode. So we definitely want to bring those people back, but also we have new people that we're talking to new leaders in the community that we're really excited to connect with. Um, And, you know, I think in our last prep meeting, the three of us, we had it, we, we had, we meet every week and we prep for the podcast Um, in our last prep meeting. We, I don't even know who brought it up. I think it was maybe Devin um, had talked, had talked about like, a reality dance show, a dance reality show. And we all started kind of brainstorming what our ideal pitch would be for the ultimate reality dance show, right? Um, And so we've come today to you, our listeners, and to each other to pitch our reality dance show. Dun, dun, I think dun. the reason why we were talking about it is because you, you've recently become obsessed with Love Wagon, 
that's how that's how that conversation started. Oh, yes, that's right. I've recently become obsessed um, with Japanese shows in general. So I started watching Terrace House um, and then I started watching Ainori, Ainori Love Wagon. And I freaking I finished it. I finished the first season, the, the Asia, Asia journey. That's the one that I finished. Um, and it was so good. And so I think I was sharing with you um, maybe one of the episodes I watched or I was sharing the premise. That's what it was. I was sharing the premise. And so I think that it would be cool to have a dance wagon, a dance bus, where Wait, you... we didn't rock, paper, scissors to go <laughs> oh, to see who goes first for the pitch because our listeners are going to vote on which reality show they would want to see okay. like happen in real life. They're going to tag Netflix. That, tag Netflix. For that sure. was a smooth pitch. That was a smooth pitch. Like you didn't even you, you didn't even like start it. You just said love wagon and then it transitioned into the dance wagon i'm saying it is gonna be the pitch that wins because it's foolproof okay it's foolproof okay let's rock paper scissors fine i'll i I won't i won't go into my pitch yet rock paper scissors go You're only seeing how ridiculous this is if you're watching the video portion of this podcast. <laughs> okay, what, ready. What about what about the emojis? Can we do something with the emojis? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it'll record. It's okay. Oh, I just hearted myself. <laughs> Can you guys see that? <laughs> uh You can raise your hand. How do I take these out now? Lower hand. I think they'll disappear. (laughs) But I don't know if it'll record. Let's just go youngest to oldest. Let's boss Dylan around while we still can. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I I didn't prepare. I forgot about it. Yeah. (laughs) Wow, really showing up as the new co-host, setting that bar real high. It's because I don't I don't watch reality shows a lot. So it's 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 kind of hard for me to, you know, come up with one. I thought you I thought you and Chelsea were watching that one like too too hot to handle or something on Netflix. That was ages ago. Uh, okay. I had one in mind. I had one in mind. If I, I was, was going to really... say, if you if you want to have time to think about it, we can go oldest to youngest. No, poor Devin. No, poor Devin gotta, gets stuck in the middle every time. I, I got to show up. I got to show up and show out. All right, go, go, new call, call out podcast host. Go. Okay. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, just just have Atha go first. <laughs> All right, so we've got the dance wagon, and it would follow the same premise as the love wagon, right? Except I think it should be even because the love wagon only has four guys and three girls. So I think it should be even. I think it should be four guys and four girls. And I think that they, you pick a, an area to travel in, just like they do in the love wagon, and you go to different cities. And you teach class and then you have like side dance competitions, but then also there's a chance that you could fall in love with someone on the bus, even though it's called dance wagon, you're spending all this time. Oh, that's the other thing. You have to have your phones taken away from you. So no social media so that you can connect with each other as dancers and then maybe fall in love. So it's like a dance. You've got the dance component, which is exciting. You've got the travel component, which is also exciting and then you've got the potential for them to fall in love which is also exciting (laughs) i can't think of any other words (laughs) i mean i feel like this is just 
kind of so similar to the love wagon, not super original. <laughs> it's true. It's true. True. And then no. Okay. Wait. So then there's the, the other company. I'm not done. Okay. So then I, I know it's copying a love wagon and I'm sorry, F- Fuji entertainment who creates the love wagon. I'm copying your idea, but they also play the episodes back in front of a panel of people that comment on what's happening, right? So like I could be a commentator, Netflix. I've got good vocabulary. I have a podcast. I could be a commentator and I could commentate, comment, commentate, comment on the dance wagon and the people, right? No? I, I have two points to make. One, that's just a ripoff of Tara's house. <laughs> <laughs> two, you really do have such a robust vocabulary, but for some reason in this episode, you're saying the same words like three, four times, like earlier. I'm like, struggling. it's very interesting. It's so interesting. <laughs> and it's interesting. <laughs> I'm struggling today. Guys, words are very hard for me today. Words are very difficult. I don't know. Maybe the presence of Dylan is making me kind of nervous. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's making me nervous. It's like in the anime where they had this great aura and you just see physically like everyone shutting down. I I have that effect. I'm just kidding. I I have that effect. So what would your show be called? Dance Wagon? No, I got to think of a better name. I got to think of a better name, but also I think that like people have, so people have the option to leave the dance wagon. And then I think once they they can like, if they want to eliminate someone from the dance wagon, they can challenge them to a freestyle battle and be like, I'm going to challenge you. And then the winner of the freestyle battle gets to say, I'm, I want my opponent to go home because he's annoying or she's annoying. And then the last person on the wagon, I don't know, wins like a prize or something. Wins wins a meet and greet with Randy Jackson. I don't know. I haven't thought it all the way through. <laughs> For those who have not seen this show, they're not like, just to clarify, they're not on an actual wagon. They're in a van. Yeah. A pink van. But mine won't be pink. What what color would it be then? I don't know. What's a good color for dance? I don't know. Yellow, because I'm wearing yellow. Mustard. <laughs> Mustard van. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I wasn't I wasn't as prepared as I claimed I was. <laughs> and you're giving me crap. Okay. All right, more to come, Netflix. Don't turn me down just yet. I just got to formulate more ideas. Don't turn me down. All right, Devin, go. Beat that. Let me just say that Dylan's not going to want to go. He's not going to want to pitch his idea after I pitch my idea. Oh, shoot. He might not even want to be a co-host after. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, go. Just do it. Go. No, I'm just kidding. Just do it. Just do it. Dear Netflix producers, I propose to <laughs> That's you. cheating already. Why? Because I prepared? Because I thought about this all day yesterday? Yeah. It's called being prepared. So... <clears throat> Dear Netflix producers, I would like to propose to you one of the greatest dance reality shows that will ever grace America's home screens. And if you so wish, the world's. Are you ready? I have a title for this one. Mm. the show <laughs> no Dill, you're gonna you're gonna be like so behind this you're gonna want to make it happen you're gonna want to make it a reality so the name of the show 
Should I tell you the name of the show after? Yeah, maybe say it after. Okay, maybe I'll say it after because I feel like it ties everything in. So my show, it's a little bit, it's a little bit inspired by Love My Kids. <laughs> it's a little bit inspired by Terrace House. However, however, there's going to be some crazy differences. This part I didn't, I didn't prepare for. So I'm, I'm already struggling with my pitch, <laughs> but essentially you'll have a group of dancers. I don't know how many, maybe let's just say like three to five dancers, right. Of each gender. I don't know. Can we even say gender on the podcast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Like association. Whatever you identify as. You can say okay. gender. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Max says you can say it. Okay. <laughs> so you, you, so you'll, you'll have a set of female dancers, a set of male dancers. They come on to the show and they want to find some love. Right. So these, these are dancers who are fairly skilled and are ready to take their careers to the next levels, but they also want to take their, their love life to the next level. So they're here to find the significant other of other of their dreams who also enjoys and loves dance, who pursues dance as a passion. So they'll live, actually, this is kind of like that one show on Netflix already. What was the one that you made us watch where they're like in separate rooms? Love is blind. Love is blind. I love hate is blind. That show. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm taking too long to pitch my idea. It's like the, the, the excitement is just like dropping down so rapidly. But these, these sets of dancers will live in this house, I don't know, or in this building, right? But they won't get to see each other. The only means of interacting with each other is through dance, so they're going to introduce themselves through choreography. They're going to get to know each other, ask questions through choreography. And the, the other person that they are trying to get to know will respond. And as the show goes, goes on, these relationships will develop. You'll start to see certain couples gravitate towards one another until eventually they say they want to start their lives together. They want to get married right? Because stakes have to be super high. They, they're going to get married. So you get to this point in the show where they're going to propose and still no words have been exchanged. The only thing, the only interaction that you've had with this other dancer is seeing their choreography. You're basing your decision to marry this person on how good of a dancer they are essentially, right? Because that's all you get to see from them is their appearance and their skill level. So get to like towards the end of the season. I really got to refine my pitch for Netflix, but get to towards the end of the season. You got one couple, right? And this person, person dancer A, pro professes their love to dancer B through choreography. And dancer B has a chance to respond. They get to say they they through choreography still they get to say yes or no, and if they decide that they do want to get married, here's the plot twist. Are you ready for it? Each of these people, without being told that the other person is also being, how do I want to say this? Each person. <laughs> Each person will be offered their dream job as a dancer. And so they can either choose to get married to the love of their life, love of their life, right? Because they're going to get married. Or they can take the deal. They can only choose one. But the other person doesn't know that they're being offered a deal. They think it's only them. So they can only get married if they both say yes. So... All right. The deal then can't be offered until the end. 
It can't be, it's not offered until the end. The dancers don't know it's happening. Nobody knows it's happening until the host of the show, by the way, uh, the hosts of the show are Celine Haro and Isidro Raphael. Okay. Oh, shit. All right. I know. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So that, I don't know. I just feel like as ridiculous as this show is, they would be the perfect host because they're just like the perfect couple. They're the perfect dance couple. <laughs> so they, sure. the host, the host. So Celine is over here and she's like, so you can choose to marry the, the dancer, the love of your life, or you can take this, this deal, this once in a lifetime opportunity to further your dance career. And then Isidro is doing the same with the other dancer and they don't know. And so that's the show. I know I need to work on my pitch, so please don't come for, sure. for me for, for that. But I hope that it gives you a glimpse as to how excellent, how gut-wrenching the show can be. And the show will be called It Takes Two to Tango. <laughs> because it takes two to get married, right, for the show? takes two to tango that was pretty good that was pretty good i i agree that maybe you need to work on your pitch for sure um maybe start it with sharks like you're pitching to shark tank shark dear sharks oh, you're funny dear you're sharks funny. dear sharks you're funny you're funny sharks. <laughs> i love it i'm with it i would watch it 100 i would watch it um but let's all remember, listeners, that Devin got inspiration from the Love Wagon, which was from my pitch. So let's just keep that in mind as but you're my listening show, to the pitches. So the thing is, is that my show is an original. It's an original. There's no wagon. There's no wagon in mine. Yeah, but my wagon's and, and, yellow, not pink. <laughs> and my pitch you will find has, is the most complete. I've got the name of the show. I've got how the show flows. I've got the the plot twist for the finale, right? The season finale that will get you to watch season two when it comes out. And I've, did I say I already got the host? I got the host in the title. It's like, there's so many things. There's so many things already going for this show. All right, Dylan, you're think I see you're thinking hard. The gears are turning. What have you come up with in the last two minutes? I've actually been thinking about this for a while. Okay. So um, I'm not going to be pitching to Netflix. I'm actually going to be pitching to uh, Hulu or it's the Food Network. Ah, food. Are we there? Yes, yeah, food. See the difference. The difference between me and my sisters is that they they're so focused on love, on on finding love in another dancer. But why not? Why not focus on dancers finding the love in food? Think about it. Just think about it. Stop laughing. Stop laughing, Hulu. Stop. <laughs> Okay, so I feel as dancers, we know the good spots. You know, wherever we're at, we know we know all the spots. We know all the good Mexican spots. We know all the good pho spots, all the good ramen spots. So here, here, here's my. I, I need to stand back for this one. You need to stand back because this was my idea. <laughs> Your idea. Okay. Yeah. Where you're going to have your follow dancers to their favorite food spots. And it's like, what's that show? The, Phil, feed Phil. Somebody please feed Phil. Somebody feed Phil. Shh, shh, stop. Hold on. Somebody feed Dill. <laughs> So obviously, obviously someone has stolen my idea 
No, I talked about this idea. I talked about this idea when the studio closed. I said, how great would it be if we just like went to all of our favorite food spots with like our dance friends and talk dance and food? How am I supposed to sound familiar? That far ago? Sound familiar, Dylan? You know what? I'm done. Take it or leave it. Was it the same? Whoa. Was it the same? Listen, 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 listen. I Someone has already stolen my idea. They say I've stolen theirs, but that's been so long ago, I do not remember. But here is the name. Okay, are you ready? Is the show as I said it would be? Yes. I knew it! But here's a twist. Here's a twist. There can be two dancers that fall in love. <laughs> Over food? Yeah. Okay, but here's the name. Here's the name. Are you ready? Mm. I don't think you guys are ready. I don't think you guys are ready. Are you still thinking of it? Is that why you're delaying? No. You're building suspense. Yeah, I'm building suspense. Watch. You guys are going to be like, oh my God, wow. He's so intelligent. It's going to be called, can I please get an eight count? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I please get a side of fries like that? Yeah. Like, can I please get like an eight count of chicken strips, but it's dancers eight like count. Eight Come count on. of chicken nuggets, delicious. Um, I mean, I like your idea because I came up with it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you seriously don't remember us talking about that though? I don't. Oh, okay. I guess just, you know, great minds think alike. Maybe I'm just hungry. Yeah. I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, listeners, I'll leave it to you. I, uh, I think we should come back maybe and refine our pitches further. But Netflix, if you want one of our show ideas, you, ha you have to, you know, if you want Devin's show idea, you have to go through me and Dylan. If you want my idea, you have to go through Devin and Dylan. And if you want Dylan's idea, you have to go through me and Devin. It's a package uh, deal. I'll, can I make something clear? Sure. I, I don't want Netflix. Okay. Who I don't who? want Netflix. I want Disney Plus. Disney Plus. <laughs> Disney Plus or... HBO Max. I'm trying to watch Godzilla versus Kong. If you want to hook it up, <laughs> you know, Disney Plus. You trying to get Avengers movie? I don't know. You know what I mean? Can I just say that Dylan's is probably the most reasonable out of the three shows that we came up with. Just saying, even though it's you know my my idea. I liked it though. I mean, maybe there's a way that we can combine all of them. A, a wagon taking us to food places, but they're blindfolded. Hmm. No, no. But a wagon taking dancers to food places, and then they stop in cities that have a house where they communicate only through dance. <laughs> All right. Well, it'll, it'll be, it'll be a wagon. And you know how in elementary school you had to get like those dividers when you take a test, they'll be, they'll be in their own seats. They'll be in their own, their own pods. So, yeah. So you can never see each other. And they'll be like, what kind of food do you like? Like, Oh my God, I love that too. Oh my God. I love you dancing. I know. Okay. I got it. I got you guys. We got it. They can be in a wagon and then they can go to their favorite food spots, but they can only order through the language of dance. It's like interpretive. Give us, a, give us, give us an example. How, how can you say I want a Chick-fil-A sandwich through dance? <laughs> I don't know. You got to channel your creative choreographer. Can I 
get a Chick Fil A sandwich. Hey, like, <laughs> I like it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, I feel like we should kind of backtrack a little bit on the reality shows, just because we did have an opportunity to be on a reality show, if you guys recall, when we had the studio. I remember. I remember that. We did. We actually got, um, we made it to like the second round interviews, I think. So I can't even remember how we made the con- connection. Maybe you guys can help me fill in the gaps, but someone had reached out to us and said that they were interested in talking to us because we had just opened the box and um, they wanted to maybe talk to us about the potential of like following us around with cameras. And uh, we were kind of hesitant going into it. And I think Devin and I talked on the phone with the producers and we told them, you know, about us and about the studio. And then they wanted to actually do like a FaceTime uh, audition with us where they wanted to meet us and they wanted to meet all the dancers in our studio. Um, And yeah. And then I don't remember what happened after that, but I don't think that we were, I don't think that we made the final cut. I don't think we were interesting or dramatic enough. I think they were like, oh, that was what it was. The producers were like, so like, tell us about the dynamic, you know, between like you and the dancers. Tell us the dynamic between you and the parents. I think they were looking for something like Dance Moms on the Lifetime Network, but they wanted the, you know, the the street dance or the hip hop version. Um, And we just didn't have enough drama because all of us got along. So I think that's why they were like, no, these people are going to be too boring. That's why we're siblings. We make each other stronger. We complement each other. But then, you know, we also have our own things going on. We're each unique, but also the same in a lot of ways. Mostly the same. We're mostly the same. (laughs) What's that movie? Oh, the interview. It's a bad movie, but bad as in it's politically incorrect yeah it's with james franco and seth rogan i don't know why i just thought of it but it's when he he lands in the place he's like we're all we're all different but you know we're same 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 (laughs) (laughs) i don't know why it just came in my head yeah exactly we're same same same, 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 same. Four sames, because there's four siblings. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, I love you both so much. D- Dylan, love you. Devin, love you. Jordan, you're not here, but I love you. Wish you were here. Um, and um, yeah, I think that this is going to be an amazing change for all of us. And um Thanks for thanks for listening to the Collab podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the Collab podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please show your support by leaving a review on iTunes and be sure to subscribe to our show wherever you get your podcast. The conversation continues over on Instagram and YouTube with highlights from today's episode. Yeah, yeah. No, that's my 